Welcome to the Study On Podcast. I'm your host, Angie Bauman, and I am passionate about Bible study. Friend, my journey has not been an easy one. I am a trauma and abuse survivor, and I still walk with a limp. But I also walk in freedom, because as I've studied God's Word, He has released me from layers of shame and invited me into a life filled with an abundance of His peace, joy, rest, and hope. I'm transformed because I study the Bible, and my heart's desire is to create offerings that help you get and stay in your Bible so you experience that transformation too. So thank you for spending a few minutes with me. Maybe it's as you enjoy your coffee or with pen and notebook ready, or you're driving to work or walking the dog from wherever you are in your day. Let's dive deep into a verse of scripture together. So we walk steady on. Let's get started. Welcome in, my friend. Today, we are continuing a series in which we are unpacking the 16 characteristics of love outlined by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. And today, we are going to explore that love rejoices with the truth. I published a Bible study on these verses in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8 in December of 2023. And that Bible study is called Love Never Fails. It was the first study we journeyed through together in Steady on University, and the learning was so rich during that study that I decided to bring pieces of it here to the podcast. And with me today is my dear friend, Katie Mason. Katie is back in the house. Katie helped us kick off this series as we dove deep. Is that the way you say that? As we looked really hard at what this love word is all about. If you haven't listened to that, go back and listen to the first episode because that's just really, it's a really great way to start off, of course. And, but Katie's back in the house today. Welcome back, my friend. So glad to have you here. Thanks, Angie. I am super excited to be here. We're going to be, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. That's it. That's it. (laughs) We're going to be studying this idea that love rejoices with the truth using my step-by-step Bible study method. And step-by-step is an inductive method that focuses on studying one word in one verse of scripture to find life application. And if you'd like to study along with us today, you will find the links to a study sheet as well as the step-by-step masterclass. If you happen to be new to the method, that masterclass has two videos. It takes about 20 minutes total to watch those videos and all that kind of good stuff is in today's show notes. So Katie and I actually only live about four hours apart and we got to see each other just this past weekend before the past weekend before we're recording this, not before we are dropping this. It'll be a few more weeks before that, but it was so Zoom is great, my friend, but I prefer it when we get to be side by side. Absolutely. Not on screen. Not on screen. No, you can't. What I love, you have a phrase like wrap my arms around someone's neck. And we got to do a lot of that. And and it was just really cool to share space with you and just enjoy some nature and meet other women who were hungry for the word of God. And that was a blessing. It was. It was just a real joy. It sure was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, all righty. Well, here we go. First Corinthians 13, six in the NASB says this does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. And of course we're talking about love. Love does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. The book of first Corinthians was written by the apostle Paul. He was writing to the church of Corinth around AD 53 to 55. Chapter 13, where this podcast series focuses, has 13 verses. It is a chapter on agape love. Verses 4 to 8 talk about the description of love, the things that it is, and the things that it is not. So one more time, love does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Okay, Katie, take us away. Step one is to choose our word, and our word for this episode is... It is truth. Excellent. Yes. Yes. There, there are some really cool definitions and even some that were considered old, which surprised me because they didn't feel old to mm. me, but maybe that means I'm getting old. <laughs> as, an, as, a def, as a noun, the word true as a noun is a state or quality of being true to someone or something. And the old words were faithfulness or fidelity, which I'm pretty sure there's a bank called Fidelity, which maybe we should all switch to that. That's not an endorsement. That's just, <laughs> they're committed to, yeah. to truth. Yeah. We can have true facts 
a genuine depiction. One of the ones that really stood out to me was genuine reality. Yes. I don't know if you remember, there were those commercials for Walgreens and it was like Walgreen world and everything was perfect. Like the sky I was always do blue. do remember and, those. Yeah. And so... I remember someone teasing a friend that they lived in their own Walgreen world. And, and then that became a running joke. And, and just that idea that we, we so easily build what we want reality to be. So the fact that truth is genuine reality, I think that's a, an important distinction mm. and to talk about later as we get into like our, what I learned. Yeah. I love that you're bringing that up already because here's what I'm feeling already that love rejoices, not in the Walgreens world, but in the genuine mm -hmm. reality, which is sometimes a lot less perfect than the Walgreens world. Right. Like I'm just like, yeah. I'm feeling this like invitation to be real with who I am and my story and what I've been through and those mm -hmm. things, because actually that's what love rejoices in is that is, is what is real about us. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's an invitation to imperfection, to embrace what needs to be changed mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit in us. It's, it's an invitation to be honest yes. with ourselves and others about our humanity, but, and then the need that we have for our Lord's grace and mercy. And it's an invitation to recognize where we've come from, like you said, and where we are and it gives us hope for where we might go. Yeah. That's why I liked that one so much. Isn't there such a power yeah. when I, I always appreciate so much when my kids, I'll, something didn't go right, or they didn't do something they were supposed to do. And they just right away are like, I forgot, or I mm. just got busy, or I didn't have this conversation because I got nervous and I know I was supposed to do this and I didn't do it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can totally work with this, right? This yeah. is not that I'm like, thank you. Thank you for just telling me what the obstacle was and why they didn't get done or whatever, because mm -hmm. that gives us an opportunity to grow. And as I can do that with my children, isn't that, I just feel that from my heavenly father, just being like, just tell, just let's just talk about what the obstacle was, right? Let's just talk about yeah. what happened out there so that you can, we can confront that, deal with it yes. and you can grow. Yes, absolutely. So right? good, no, so fast today. We're just on right? the definition. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome, people. Yep. It's going to be all kinds of bonus, <laughs> bonus truths we've got going on. Carry um, on, my friend. Okay. Um, and then this, this hit my editor heart. And then my husband is an accountant slash artist in his mind. And so accuracy is super important to him. Assert as true, make exact or correct for inaccuracy. So, and, and I think again, going back to kids, like they're so black and white, like, like you said, we were going to eat at 12 and it's 1202. Why isn't the food on my plate yet? You know, like at a large family gathering where yeah. nothing goes on time. Like I think about Thanksgiving. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I'm not like, I can't like force the turkey to be done faster. It's, I don't know what time my grandma got up to put it in the oven, but like, <laughs> it's just, I mean, honestly, she would have had it done three days ahead of time, but, but like all the other people that aren't my grandma, you know, maybe their potatoes didn't boil at the right temperature. I don't know, but like that correct for inaccuracy. And again, I think there's, there's, that feels harsh, but our Lord is not harsh. He, right. he, he does that so gently and kindly with us. Yeah. Some synonyms for truth are genuineness, precision, authenticity, gospel, which I love so much, reliability, and then candor. All of, all of those words are foundational to relationship too, right? We have to have, we have to be real and genuine and authentic and be willing to be have candor in our conversations with one another. I think so often I want to protect people's feelings. And so I don't, I don't say what I really mean. And that, you know, burying the truth. I saw, I read an article this morning that said, called it a poisoned Oreo, where you have the chocolatey mm -hmm. cookie of compliments on each side, but the truth is sandwiched in between. And, and I've operated like that. Like you don't want to hurt someone's feelings, but if, 
if we're not if we're not speaking with candor, aren't we aren't we holding back what what they really need? It's Jesus and and he told us to speak truth with love, right? I'm not talking about your spiritual gift of harassment of someone. I'm talking about we can approach our brothers and sisters in Christ with candor, but in a loving way. And again, it goes back to relationship and time. And I think you say, Angie, clear is kind. Clear is kind. I get that from Brene Brown. But yeah, that's like a yes. personal motto. Is that the right way of me? And it's what yeah. I've, for the Steady On team, I'm like, this is our, this is the culture I want here. Clear is kind. I please let me know where there's been a, a miscommunication. Let me know what questions you have. Let me know how this is landing with uh -huh. you because I, I would much rather know what that is and much be, be able to be free to tell you what that is for me than to have us making up stories about what the other person thought yeah. or felt, right? Let's just like not do that to each other. Yeah, absolutely. And then antonyms, antonyms, falsity, flaw, a half truth, mistake, a universal lie. There's so many things that we believe as a culture that we kind of accept as these quote unquote truths, but they're they're not. They're, I mean, we could just look out onto our main street and see them. We could see, you know, the magazine covers that tell you you got to look away a certain way. You could look at movies that tell you there's no hope in the world, everything. We're in this post hopeful society. And just, and just because a lot of people believe it doesn't make it truth. Ooh, False. That's really good. Oh. Just yeah. because a lot of people believe it doesn't make it truth. Katie, that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. And then again, this goes back to that poisoned Oreo insincerity, inaccuracy, and like flaw. Like, I, I think, I think we see truth as this very black and white thing. There's, but I think it's more than just black and white. It's about accuracy. Like if, if, if we talk about love, my human experience can see love is very flawed, but that's a lie. That's mm -hmm. not truth. That is, that's the enemy telling right. me that my experience is the only way to see love, but that's not how Jesus yeah. loves us. His love is perfect. So those are, that's our word. And that's some of what. That is great. Uh, that's a great, great truth. foundation. I think about, you were talking about how love being flawed. And I think more and more as I'm going through this study for about the third or fourth time now. But I think about these instructions almost like rules of the road, because yeah. actually like if we all, if we all knew and obeyed the rules of the road all the time, if we did that perfectly, there would be no accidents, right? That we, wow, there, because yeah. it's created this way. So like, these are the rules of the road for love, if you will. And if we mm. all did this all the time, there wouldn't be hurt feelings. There wouldn't be mm. some, of the, some of the things we're talking about, right? But and so you were talking about that, like, it's not love that's flawed. People are flawed because we haven't followed the rules of the road. And obviously, as I just extend that metaphor, I understand that this is a bigger thing than, but at the same time, this is how we avoid following these rules of the road for love, if you will, is how we avoid crashing into each other emotionally. Right. And so yeah. we are flawed, but love when it is pure is not flawed. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So good. Absolutely. So good. So good. All right. Mm -hmm. Step two is called investigate. We divide that up into four parts. Part one is to compare this word in other translations. I didn't find very many things. I found a few. The easy translation says right and true. The RSV says right. And then the WE, I found that it said that love, well, here's the whole thing. It says love is not glad when people do wrong things. It's always glad when they do right. So it not oh. love is not glad when people do wrong things. That's the beginning of yeah. that. It's like rejoice in unrighteousness, but they rejoice when people do right things. So it's not glad. So, cause I don't know about y'all, right. but I, like every once in a while, oh, this is the bad thing in me, right? That rises up that you're somehow you're affirmed or 
you, what is that that's inside us that almost like likes it a little bit when somebody yeah. does the thing that they're not supposed to do? Oh, I don't even really want to keep yeah. talking about that, but this just like yeah. lays that out very clearly. Like it's not yeah. happy about that. It's happy right. when people do the right thing. Mm-hmm. Right. And I love that that difference, like it, it lets love still be there. Like yeah. some of the other, other words, like love rejoices and being right and true. I'm not sure how it said it, but it almost takes away the ability to be the opposite, right? Mm-hmm. But when it, like ha- that translation gives it the, I think more whole picture, like yeah. there are people who do wrong things and it's, and it's not, I guess, ignoring that. Sometimes right. I think the word of God, while beautiful and perfect and speaks to our hearts, I think sometimes we, we don't know how to interpret our humanness into it. And so yeah. that translation really gives us a clear picture of it's not just about being right or being honest or not telling lies it's about a bigger invitation to not not delight when our enemy even gets what's coming to them yeah you know again that's societal that's a Mm -hmm. universal lie Mm -hmm. that we should rejoice when our enemies Mm -hmm. you know or even less of a word or the person, the irritating neighbor, you know, their, I don't know, their fence breaks in a windstorm. Like that's, we shouldn't rejoice at that, even though they're irritating to us. We love them and we should, we should not rejoice that they have to pay for a new fence like that. It's an invitation to bigger, like Jesus did with an invitation to bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's an invitation to beyond the surface. Well, and it reminds me too, as you were saying black and white earlier, like no one is black and white. No one is all good or all bad. And so even in my close relationships, how do I rejoice in the things that are true and beautiful inside that person and not rejoice in the things that aren't? And how do I open myself up honestly to receive Mm. their love for the places I'm not only lovable. This makes me cry. I'm not only lovable in the places that I'm right, even though that's a lie Mm. that I often believe, but what if I'm lovable for the whole me, even the places now, maybe my spouse or my children don't rejoice in the places that I'm not as pretty inside, but it doesn't mean they don't love me right? in all of me. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. They'll still bring you a cup of Coke zero when you've been upset at them about not taking out the trash. Like, like, yes, right. Yes. Like that's them loving you. I know Angie loves Coke zero. That's why <laughs> she that's, does. <laughs> that's why I brought that up or, you know, or whatever, you know, and they'll figure out like, no, I shouldn't offer Katie a piece of cake. Cause she turns into a raging monster <laughs> when she has sugar. So instead I'll buy her flowers instead. Right. Like they, the people closest to us should learn how to love us completely in mm-hmm. all our ways. And, and hopefully we're doing that for yeah. them and, and others too. Yeah. 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 Part two is to research the original word. And of course we're going to be in the Greek. And what did you find there? Oh, I found so much. Awesome. Yeah. 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 So the Greek word is lethia. It's a feminine word that means objectively, universally, any matter under consideration it's according to truth, truly, certainty, in fact. And then from Vines, or this might have been from Oxford, it says truth as taught within Christian religion, respecting God and execution of his purposes. Sorry, I have to read old handwriting <laughs> of his purposes through Christ. It's the reality lying at the basis of an appearance. So it's even being able to look past what appears to be the truth as a personal excellence. It's candor of mind free from affectation, pretense, simulation, falsehood, or deceit. So it's that it's taken away that poison Oreo again. And it, the word, this is from actually the study on university group meeting, someone shared the word of God shows us who we really are. That was in response to the reality that's lying at Mm -hmm. the basis of of an appearance. You could even say of our appearance. Mm -hmm. It goes so far beyond uh, what we want the world to see, or even what we are able to see of ourselves. This truth 
it's so pure. It lights up all the all the places that need to be brought to light. Yes. As you're talking, I'm thinking of another way that this is applicable, at least in my life. I'm sure it is in yours as well. I'm, I'm pretty sure. And that is like sometimes something that isn't true is popular, right? You were mm. saying like, and so uh, are we sometimes willing to say, I'm not going to go along with that, or I'm not going to celebrate that. The word is rejoices with the truth, yeah. right? Like, I'm not going to celebrate this thing that may look nice and other people may be celebrating, but I know the word of God and I know better. And so I need to not link arms with you and yes. celebrate this with you. It's just another yes. way. I think that we, that's, that's the way we honor Christ's sacrifice for us because mm. he is true. Right. And to say, no, if you are true and this is not of you, then even if it's the popular opinion that it is of you or that it looks like truth or one of those half truths, you know, that we were talking about before, yeah. then I'm not going to celebrate it. Even if that means I look different. Ugh. Yeah. And that, that for me is super, is really, really hard because I, I want to be liked. I want to be liked by my peers. I want to be liked by my friends. I want to be liked by my family. And it's hard to hold that line or more often it's hard to let go of what maybe I have celebrated or even oh, endorsed yes. by participating. And then the Lord's sweet, sweet conviction <laughs> comes over. And I was like, you know, I want to convince him he doesn't mean it. Right. Because <laughs> it's not all good or bad. So there's right, a reason that, right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or mm -hmm. rationalized or, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm the kid that's like, here's all the reasons why I should be able to participate in this, even though I yeah. think at the core, I know it's mm -hmm. not. Yeah. Well, at, and at its worst, that's one of the reasons that things like church abuse or organizational mm -hmm. abuse continues Yes. Because it's not, people are unwilling to bring something down, if you will, mm. by exposing something or speaking something that is true, because there are inevitably good things also as a part of that organization, right? And so right. that's one of the ways that abuse or bullying or some of those things can yeah. perpetuate. Is that the right word? You know, continue yeah. on because it's very hard to to, yeah. to say, you know what, I can't continue to celebrate this. I can't, I right. can't rejoice in this. This isn't, this isn't actually true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Kind of oh, a whole gosh. different way that was coming up in me to look at this. Yeah. And how often, how often does then the fear of God's good work that was done in that place, the fear that the world will forget what the Lord has right. done, override the Lord calling us to bring to light that's right those things that are abhorrent to him because we believe somehow consciously or not right. that that the bad will win over right. the good mm -hmm. when in scripture we see over and over that's not the case where the lord is present and the work that he is endorsed and allowed to come that will carry on and maybe it's shadowed for a bit by the need to bring things to the light but light overcomes shadow. And mm. so there are figures who are human and no one's good or bad, but the, the good that they have done has endured over the good that was done in the name of the Lord for the Lord's purposes has endured beyond their failings. Right. And, mm. and, yes. and that's the, that's the piece we need to remember. And that's the truth that is the combat is the antidote to the lie yes that we need yes. to be silent yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah yes. that's good katie so good so part three is to read a little bit of commentary just a couple of things that i found in the enduring word it says love can always stand with and on truth because love is pure and good like truth in the commentary critical and explanatory on the whole bible that's a commentary that i love to use and hate to say because <laughs> the title is too long <laughs> It needs like a funky acronym or something like that. I put that. C, C, and E in my notes, but I will tell you what it is. And friend, always all the links to the resources that we use can be found in the show notes. But the C, C, and E says, the truth is the gospel truth, capital G, the inseparable ally of love. Isn't that interesting? The truth is the mm. gospel truth. So ultimately, 
what is, if we are questioning, this is what's uh, comforting to me. If we are questioning what's true, what is true in the gospel, right? What Mm. is true about Christ? What is true? What are God's promises? That's ultimately true. And how does whatever we're looking at examining not line up with the truth that is the gospel truth? Yeah. Richard L. Pratt says they rejoice when their loved ones try to live according to the truth of the gospel. Isn't that important? Like sometimes I think I can do, I know I can do a better job of calling out the good things I see in my children. When I see them living Mm. in a certain way, like I, like I can say, wait a second, pause right here. I did this just recently with Josh on the golf course and I'm going to brag on my kid for a second, but of course my children are not perfect and I would not say that. And I'm not a perfect parent, but recently at a golf match, Josh thought that he was hitting his ball. And Mm -hmm. instead he had found someone else's ball, like a one that someone had left there. Like it wasn't one of the players, you know, that he was playing with, he was in a match and he hit that ball instead. Well, then when he went to it the next time, he realized that he had hit the wrong ball. And Mm -hmm. that was a, it was a penalty stroke. He had to go back to where his ball had to find his original ball or drop another one. And it was a penalty stroke. And all of this. And Matt and I commented later that I don't think anyone would have known if he'd have continued Mm -hmm. to play that ball. But he said, he noticed, he's like, this is not my ball. I've hit the wrong, wrong ball, which caused a delay in the match. They had to call the coaches. They had to, you know, like we had, everybody had to kind of talk about it. It was a little bit of a big deal. It was kind of embarrassing. He's only a freshman. Like there was a lot of reason to just keep your mouth shut. And I told him later, I said, Josh, I am so Like you did a good job today in your match. And I'm so proud of you about that. But let me tell you, let me tell you what my mama's heart saw today. I saw a young man who, you know, displayed integrity, who was willing to say, I made a mistake and we have to take a minute and fix it. I'm not just going to move forward, adding to the mistake, you know? And, and that was kind of like a big thing in our house. And I did get to talk to him like that, but there are other things that I miss the opportunity to say, I see that in you and I celebrate it. Right. I see Mm. that in you and I celebrate it. And this is reminding me that I can sort of up my game. It's not a game, but up my game, if you will, you know, to encourage my children in that. So that's beautiful. Those are some commentary notes. Did you have anything from your study that you want to bring in anything else? I think I had something from the Vincent word study that that truth is a person is personified as love. Like it's, it's yes, it's an attribute of love, but that's because that's a way love is shown. Mm -hmm. And again, that even takes clear as kind to a whole new level. Like, like we need to uh, be true because we're loving one another And then this goes back, Barnes, we were talking about, it's not, it's not just liking what is good or what is true. It's rejoicing in what is true and not rejoicing in a vice, which is an old fashioned word for a sin behavior or habit or something that is not praiseworthy or lovely in others, not just for ourselves, but in others too. Mm Mm-hmm. Because we have, we forget this so much, I think, or Mm -hmm. just don't want to look at it. We have such power and influence over other people's behavior as they do of ours, right? I mean, why Mm -hmm. do we, why are we worried about peer pressure with our children or whatever? Because Mm -hmm. we don't outgrow it. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I mean, if we, if other people are like, yes, it's fine for you to do it. Doesn't it feel more fine for us to do it? Mm -hmm. And if we want more like room for ourselves to do it or something, isn't it the easiest thing to be like, yes, you should do it too, or, you know, whatever. And so we have a lot of ability to influence when we know what's right and what's wrong, what's true and what's untrue to be able to one, live that way in our example, but also on occasion, not as often, but on occasion with our words to be able to say, I, I don't celebrate that sinful, you know, demonstration. And I do this, this righteous one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's this, there's this kind of obsession with living morally gray because Mm -hmm. because there's such an aversion to being called out in in society in in the church in this in the world I don't think it's either or I think it's very much present in both places which makes me so sad but not that again not that I'm like I don't have a list of rules I follow it's just the mercy and love of Jesus that guides us but there's there's, there's a, I'm just going to call it out. I don't even want to, cause that's how aversive I am. I don't want you to get bad <laughs> negative comments. Like don't I'll ever have put that Katie's back. email in the show <laughs> notes and you, 
<laughs> this is my version. I want people to like me. But there's, it's so common to share streaming passwords. I'm just mm -hmm. going to say it. Mm -hmm. And we were convicted of how wrong that is. My, we, my husband and I, a couple of years ago, we are creatives. I write, my husband is a sculptor, and a lot of our work is online. And so that that would make it very easy for someone to take our material and turn that into their material or adapt it to, to theirs. And so while there's an idea that these big corporations, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter if I share my Netflix password with my neighbor or, or I, this is a little closer to gray than I, but like our son is in college. And so it's okay for us to just use the Hulu student rate that he gets or not even pay for that or his girlfriend's Disney or my, like my parents' Disney plus account. And, and it bothers companies because that's one of the ways they make money, but smaller than that, it bothers the employees because if a company loses money, then they will have to, they won't be able to pay employees. Yeah. And then that trickles down. And in the same way that it would more directly cost Tom or I, if someone took our work and made it their own, that's how then it affects these bigger companies. So we were convicted to not do that anymore. And so we now pay our son to use his Hulu account and we have, you know, we've deactivated the passwords for any share. Like if my parents come and they log in and they're with us and want to watch something, they enter the password and then we remove it when, when we're done. But somebody, and it just makes me, and I got really upset at somebody one time because they were arguing that it was okay to do that. And I, and I shared my, my piece and they didn't agree with me and that's okay. That's okay. The Lord hadn't spoken to them. And this isn't a holier than thou thing. This is just a conviction we have that, yeah. that it's not enough to just do right. We're also called to be above reproach mm. in other places in the, in the word. And there's other areas. And that's a hard thing for me too. Like the Lord guides us. And he's the one that tells us where we need to focus and what we need to correct. And it's not my job to come into someone's house and say, you need to log out of every shared account you have. I don't, that's not, that's not, that's not my role, except I'm taking an opportunity here to, to just challenge people to think about it. And it's, you know what, it's a very acceptable, not true thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and so that, so that, that's my, that's my, like, let's get closer to truth yeah. and love and not live in the moral gray. We're not called there. We're called to righteousness. Yeah. And so let's not live in the moral gray. I love that. You're, mm -hmm. you're just dropping a lot of good quotes. This, yes. I love Thank it, so. you, Lord. Thank ah. you, Lord. <laughs> so part four of the investigate step is to try to rewrite the verse in our own words. And I'm going to read again, where we are, just the part that we are focusing on today, love rejoices with the truth. So Katie, how did you rewrite yes. that? I said, but, but love joins in celebration over the virtues our brothers and sisters express in tangible ways. Mm. Good. That's good. That's good. All right. Step three is to find characteristics of God. And of course I wrote true. I thought, you know, mm. that's just like the, that God is true that he always points me to what is absolutely real and right and accurate. Like he's yeah. not, he's not gray. He's not mean, but he's also like not confused, right. not give me a minute. I'll get back to you. <laughs> you know, right. I have to think about it. Let's weigh the consequences. There's no. none of that with God. Like he's right. It's just, he just knows. And then I also put sincere and I, and for that, for me, it's the ways that he declares, he thinks of me, created me, all of that can be believed as his truth in my life and his mm -hmm. truth trumps all other truths. And that's one yeah. that stood out to me, right? Ultimately, when I'm confused about what's right or wrong, it's because I'm entertaining or I'm confused by the half truths mm -hmm. of the enemy. Because when I, when I'm able to clear out that mind clutter, transform my mind, hold my thoughts captive, those things that scripture tells yes. us that we can do, then actually I may not want to do the thing that is true or right. Uh, that may not be the easy thing to do, but it's not hard to figure out what that is right. either. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm so appreciative of that for him from him. So, yeah, uh, that, yeah. That, that's not a, it's not a confusing thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's awesome. Yeah. I just, I had Cornerstone, which is from, it's actually from the discussion on Tuesday from the city on university when we did this together, someone had said Cornerstone is foundational. Yes. And then, and then that led me to that song, Christ is my firm foundation, the rock upon which I stand. And like, I'm going to like build my, my life on you because, yes. because then it's unshakable. That's right. right? It's, it's that parable. The foolish man builds his house on the, the sand ground is sinking sand yes and the, right the wise yeah. man built his house on the mm -hmm. rock and let's build on the rock the yes. cornerstone yes. that is our true lord yeah good 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 yeah. step four is to identify the lie of the enemy we just talk about what makes this hard to do what is the half truth that the enemy is throwing at us what stands out to you katie oh gosh first <laughs> one the first <laughs> one that jumped right in my head because I did it for a lot of years is if I can if I can do what is right if I can follow the list of rules that I've determined is what the Lord says is right then I could be worthy of salvation on my own if mm -hmm. I can just be good enough if I can just be right enough if I can wash myself in the ritual waters of purity enough I will I can be saved mm -hmm. instead of surrendering to the grace and love of the blood of Jesus that makes me clean and uh, true. So that was the first one that I did. Good. I say, I say a lot that I'm a reformed Pharisee. Mm. I, I spent a lot of years running. I was in church because I knew the rules of church. And as long as I had those rules, God made sense. But when later in my life, uh, I didn't have the structure. The rules no longer were holding up the structure of my life. I had to relearn. I had to learn what God's love for me meant, not just the rules that I knew. I had to learn what love was and mm -hmm. how the Lord loved me. And then that's when I learned about his cornerstone. And that then is unshakable. Right. Um, any framework I try to build or we try to build in our own power will it will eventually be demolished and no matter how long it's been there or how early we started to build that it's only when the, we allow the lord to dismantle our own human-made structures that he then can rebuild something that will be everlasting yeah the word deconstruction is such a buzzword in mm. christianity right now and and yet i i feel like for most of us, as if we grew up in church, there is some kind of, not because we were taught wrong always, that sometimes it's really bad and everything has to come down and we have, you know, but yeah. there is some deconstruction of what we understood in our younger years or what we misunderstood or what we were mistaught in our younger years so that God can build a unique understanding of who he is in our hearts. And I, that, I think that's such a normal process. And those of us who really desire closer intimacy with Jesus are going to go through that and go through it again and again, probably, you know, because yeah. I'm unlearning things, even in this season of my life, as my ministry is changing, as my church attendance of where I'm going to church, I mean, it's changing as some of those things, like I'm learning some things that I had held on to pretty tightly, some walls I had constructed for myself mm. that kept me safe or kept me comfortable I didn't know then that I was doing that, but he's bringing some of that out in me right now and inviting me to kind of tear those walls down and allow him to build the house stronger in the way that he would, you know, build the house, my house of faith, if you will. Yeah. And, and that's a beautiful process actually, because he does yeah. that as he, like, as you said earlier, I think lovingly convicts us, sweetly mm -hmm. convicts us, corrects us and invites us to grow. Not because he was mad at us that we had that understanding. No. That understanding might've served us well and been the best understanding we could have in the time. But now right. that we know him more, we can have a deeper understanding and a less, it's always less legalism, less legalism, yes. less legalism that, he's, yes. that he wants us to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So good. So. All right. Step five is called, so what, where we make note of a key takeaway. And here's mine. I just said, where am I trying to avoid embarrassment by doubting or downplaying or being skeptical, skeptical about what God or others declare is true. And I, that goes along with my lie because my lie was 
how do you know that's true, Angie? Just mm. a little whisper of like, you might look stupid if you if you think that's true. Do you really know the gospel truth as well as you think you do? Are you being like too haughty or proud of yourself by saying, I mm. know this is true? You know, those little things that just pick, pick, pick away at our yeah. confidence of knowing who Jesus is. And I want to, and the more we know him, the better we can fight that, but it does still creep in, especially when we lean towards those people pleasing tendencies of, well, I certainly don't want to do this wrong. I don't want to say oh. something and be wrong. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So. Yeah. How about you? A takeaway? I, I, I wrote down, I can't be true on my own. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I think, I don't know if it was the Bible or a pastor that said this, but lies well, it says this in the Bible about Satan, lies are his native tongue. Yes, right. And we as fallen people, like that's the language we know, yeah. right? Our earliest uh, conviction is to protect ourselves and serve ourselves. And so that when unchecked leads to disastrous things. And so even lying to those we love, right? Yeah. I think about like addiction and just the lengths people will go to for their fix of whatever their addiction is. And so I cannot be true mm. um, in my own power because I will go the route of self-service, but, but I can be because the sanctity of Jesus has changed my life through the Holy spirit working and putting on the new mantle of Jesus in my life and then community is so important for this too. Like that's like, that goes back to that candor. We need people in our lives who will say, I see what you're doing. And I even maybe understand what you're doing, but this is not right, yeah. what you are doing. And I just, and, you know, I think sometimes we confuse, like we got to find our tribe and, and, you know, girl boss and all those things, but really we just need people who will be truthful with us. Yeah. And, and we don't need a lot. We don't need a lot. Even 12 is a, is a, is a big number. Thank goodness that Jesus had 12 and they went out and they did, they started the spread of the gospel, but we just need one or two. Yeah. Spiritual friendships are those. Yeah. Spiritual spiritual friendships. friendships. Proverbs says a cord of three strands is uneasily broken. Right. And that's just three. Yeah. That's two other people. Right. So that's, I guess I had a lot of takeaways. That is, that's good. (laughs) That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, friend, we would love to hear your takeaway. You can email me anytime at steadyonpodcast at gmail.com. Before we go, I have four things for you to consider. Number one, if you'd like to hold this study in your hand as we travel through the characteristics of love, you can buy the workbook on Amazon and the link for that is in the show notes. If you'd like to be a part of community Bible study, I encourage you to check out Study on University and join us for our current study. If you haven't yet, I would be grateful if you would subscribe to the podcast on whatever directory you use to listen. It only takes a second and it guarantees you'll receive every episode. And number four, if someone happened to come to mind as you were listening today, I would love it if you would share this episode with them. Inviting them into what we're doing here is another great way to support the show. Katie, again, thank you so much for being here and for joining us and teaching us today. I learned a lot as we were talking. I agree. This is one of my favorite things. I think I say that every time, but it's still true. Very <laughs> makes candor. Me so happy. It is. It is. And I, I, I love it. I love learning with you as well and from you. So Same. thank you. Same. And thank you for listening, my friend. I pray wherever your day takes you, you're walking in the confident knowledge that you are a beloved, cherished child of God. Peace.